Hey, it's Lila Meth the Mini Witch. In this video, I'm taking you on an adventure in my attempt to paint a negative or reverse color scheme miniature to help me and you stop assuming how to paint. There is a trap that people tend to fall in when painting. It's simple. You assume you already know what something is going to look like. So that's how you paint it. When you're painting an apple, you paint it red with a darker red shadow and a brighter red highlight. Or if you're going to be painting silver armor, you just use silver paint. But the thing is, is that is not always how it works. The real world is a cornucopia of colors where highlights, midtones, and shadows are each separate and unique elements that seamlessly blend together, understand what an object is supposed to look like. But if we don't take the time to analyze, then our models are going to look pretty dull. To break out of this rut, I'm going to be painting this negative or reverse color schemed model. Painting in the negative forces you to consider each paint stroke instead of running in on autopilot. I began by creating a positive digital mockup of the bust, roughing in colors how I usually do. And while this worked perfectly fine for the clothing, it went horribly, horribly wrong for the face. But we'll talk about that more later. I wanted to do something atmospheric. To keep it interesting, I decided to do blue from one side and orange from the other side. With my digital mockup complete, I placed it in my editing software and inverted the colors. Then I took that negative image and used that as my reference. Whether you're using a digital mockup or not, before applying paint to the model, take a moment and examine your project. Truly consider how and where you're going to put your paint. Where will you place your deepest shadow and where will you place your brightest highlight? How will these colors interact with each other? Where will the gradations of color fall? If you need to, find some images online that you can reference, reverse them, change them to black and white, and really examine the subtle color changes and variances that happen throughout the image that you're looking at. This can be a bit jarring at first, the first time that you put an image in negative and it suddenly looks so alien that you're not sure what you're looking at. But the thing is, is to take it out of the realm of how you normally perceive things and instead allowing your brain to analyze it without really knowing what it is. But before we get into painting, I'm going to share a realization I had at the end of this project. Well, I thought the blue and orange light would make it more fun and interesting, I sort of ruined the whole thing. The colored light washed out the natural colors, and I lost all the tiny shifts in color and value that was the whole point of this project. But I think that it is still good enough of an exercise to show my idea to you as my viewer. But know that if you're deciding to take on this project for yourself, you probably shouldn't follow the same mistake that I made. I began by basing the miniature in white through my airbrush, and then applying an extra coat of white anywhere that needed extra coverage with the paintbrush. I based it in white for two reasons. One, since I'm doing a very intense and moody image and white is the opposite of black, it's going to achieve that intense result. Second, white is going to help make sure that my bright blue and orange show up later. Next, I mix my paint on my wet palette according to my reference photo. Mixing all of my paint before I begin makes the painting process faster. Then I began by applying my orange and blue to their appropriate sides of the model. At this point, I'm only applying the large swatches of color from my reference photo. As I move towards the center of the bust, the colors went from their true intense hue to a more muddled green. This is the area that is being lit by both colors of light and therefore has turned into this interesting third color. Then I moved on to the face and that went poorly. 
I think it's because in my mock-up I was using pure color over black and white, when in reality, even though the colored light is so intense that it washes out the majority of my color, there are still going to be those underlying gradients of the skin tone that are going to impact that final color. So since I didn't have those undertones on my model and just painted pure color over black and white, it ended up looking a bit like a monstrosity. One thing I did salvage from this rendition of the face were the eyes. I began by applying a near black color to the entire eye, then using white I painted in a large circle to act as the iris, and then also placed my pupil. I used orange to give the figure blue eyes in the final rendition. Take two. I found an actual photo of a model utilizing the orange and blue lighting scheme I had originally planned, then downloaded the photo, inverted it, and used it as my new reference. Next, I painted over the face with white paint to begin repainting. Then, once again, I began by blocking in the large colors on the face of my model to mimic my reference photo. I am again taking some time to consider the model and the reference photo, noticing areas like the chin, cheekbone, and forehead on the right side, where the color is not darker slash brighter, but actually that highlight is a more intense color. After blocking in the main volumes, it was time to start painting the rest of the face. It was really helpful to me to pull down my color wheel so that I could better visually consider what the opposite of the color I wanted in the final photo and then what color I would need to paint. And then it was on to photographing my model over and over, looking at it in reverse and changing things as need be. If you're not doing things in reverse, just take some time to consider your model. Are you happy with the relationship between your colors? Are the highlights in the right place or are they just good enough? Consider your highlights and shadows and if they make sense together. At this point, I felt like I was getting the hang of it and it was becoming second nature. Then it was on to my favorite part, the final details. This is when I had to start using my imagination. Things like the glow of my two light sources on the scleras, or the color of the catch lights in my eyes. As well as the shadows near the mouth and in the creases of the forehead. Next was basically lining, but in reverse. Turns out that it's a lot harder to line in white than it is in black. And so that was a bit of a pain in the butt and really not what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting lining with white to be one of the more difficult aspects of this adventure. Here it is in the end. This project was really interesting and I'm fairly pleased with how it turned out. Though I do wonder if I would have had as much fun if I had actually done it correctly and hadn't washed out the colors with my colored lights. Even if you don't plan on doing a negative or reverse style model, it is my hope that this video has given you something to think about on your next project and inspire you to take a new approach to painting. As you continue painting and memorizing more and more techniques and understandings of the world, you'll be able to use fewer reference photos, and all of this will become second nature to you. Things like using purple and blue in silver armor, the fact that the scaleros are technically a lighter blue and not white, and a bunch of other things will become second nature once you start to consider and utilize them in your miniature painting. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and link a bunch of stock image websites in my description box and down below, so you can look up reference photos for whatever you may need. 
But no matter what you paint next, whether you use a reference photo or not, remember to consider how you are going to be painting and don't just assume you know what you're doing. If you decide to paint a negative reverse style model, please tag me on Instagram. I would love to see your work. If you like what I do here, the best way that you can support me is over on Patreon, where you can get behind the scenes photos and videos, personal critiques from me, and much more. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Stay safe and good luck painting.